Oh wow, so you walk in and immediately you're in this incredible one great room, which for the country is very unusual. Yeah, it was great. I mean, we have a dining room in New York that we, at the time we were building the house, never used. And so we decided that we did not want to have the formality of that in the country. So we did this sort of living dining room, all in one, you know, fabulous big room. And it's, and it's wonderful. I mean, it really, it's great because you've got the fireplace in the winter and... They're completely uh, separate feelings. Yeah. But it's just very inclusive and it's so richly layered in here. I mean, you've got your modern art, you've got beautiful, a, a lot of antique furniture. And I mean, what's fun here, the Cezanne was one of the first things that we bought at one of the antique shows in New York while the house was being built. Really? Which then became sort of the foundation for this drape table behind the sofa. Really? And so it kind of started with this? It started with that, and it started with the pine cone urns on top of the pedestals over there that we bought in Chicamico, which is near Millbrook. Uh-huh. And again, that was actually before the house was even on the drawing board. Brian? I'm really freaking out over this guest bathroom, how glamorous it is and beautiful. And this mirror is to die for. Yeah, the mirror we got at one of the Wendy Pier shows, mm -hmm. and it was a wash basin that somebody had cut out into the shape of a flower and inserted the mirror. And that sort of inspired the bathroom. Powder room has to be a real room. you know. It and it also it has to reflect, be... have personality, which yeah. yours does. Yeah. love this guest bedroom. So great. Well, when, when we have house guests, generally we only have a couple. We don't very often have a full house, but I always like to offer them their choice between the twin or the queen bedroom. And a lot of times they select this room because they love the beds. These beds, wait, this looks a lot like that day bed that Daisy was sitting on downstairs. That, was, that... that was the inspiration for this. And that, that was a big fight between Mrs. Parrish and I 30 years ago. There were two dealers that were selling the contents of their apartment and moving to Florida, and she and I went in together to see what they were selling. You went and in as friends and came out as head of oh my God. We No, but we really had a fight over this. She got so angry with me because the bed downstairs I paid $200 for, which then was the inspiration for these, which I made for clients, which they ended up not wanting, hence their being in this And room. they're so perfect in here. And right. actually, they look so vintage. Yeah. You would never know that you... Yeah. Well, these, these are now 20 years old. Oh, the Albert Hadley wallpaper. Right. My favorite. My favorite. His English rose. So, Susanna, 30 years ago when we were doing uh, Enid Haupt's apartment at 740 Park Avenue, which was an, a job that I did with Albert, uh -huh. Enid Haupt, who was the sister of Walter Annenberg, had this fabulous pillow in her bedroom which said, I'm of sound mind and body and I'll spend every last cent I have. And that's become sort of, for me, exactly how I live my life. Master bedroom of perfect proportions sort of worked out that way. I mean, it just kind of laid out really nicely based on the, the width of the house, the way it had to it's be wide. organized. It's wide. I love a wide yeah. room. Yeah. I don't want a yeah. cavernous master bedroom. They're so cold. Right. But what's fun about this room is that it feels, you keep thinking, oh, this is an old country house that Brian renovated. But you built this from scratch, yeah. and then you had the luxury to make it feel old, but of course you got the modern proportions. Right. It's generous, right. but it's cozy. Yeah. Like the way you have the little bathroom, the master. I love yeah. that. You can see it right there. It's yeah. so beautiful. And I'm freaking out over the dark trim. Well, the trim is the trim is really a great story because we did when the building, it's black, right? Would well, you say or what? No, it's it's almost like a, a, like a graphite. But when we were doing the paint schedule for the house and we sent it to the builder, and he got this ten page paint schedule, and he's like, "What on earth have you done?" And I was like, "Well, this is what we normally do," but. They you were, were telling them when each thing had to be done by, what, each room, what you wanted. What the wall color, what right. the trim color, because we have all these gradations of grays throughout the house mm -hmm. for trim, so it's not as obvious as it looks, although it's very simple and straight out of a can. But in this room, the phone rang one day, and George was, was talking to me, and he said, we started the color in the master bedroom, but I'm sure it's a mistake. And I said, well, we'll be up there on Friday, so we'll look at it. We arrived Friday, and I walked in, and I said, I don't know what you're talking about. It's exactly what I wanted. It's like what exactly I what I wanted. Of course you knew. 
This was nine years ago. This was the house the weekend that we moved in when it was a little bit like the Wizard of Oz when the house just drops from the sky. So it, this was it before any of the landscape. There was so a this, blade. this is the built house. You built it this from is, scratch. Yeah. There was a field here. Right. And that shows you the power of landscaping. I, was, I mean, it's exactly. a whole environment yeah. here now. Yeah. Yeah. That's unbelievable. And, and the way the trees really set the house into the landscape and give it a real scale. So when, when we were designing the house, as we were going around to friends' houses or anywhere that we would go, I was always like walking off the dimensions of these porches. And I came up with this minimum of 15 feet for the porch, which allows you to really treat it as a room. If, the minute you come in from 15 feet, whether it's even 13 feet or 11 it's feet, over. it's over. Yeah, because you and, have this extra luxury of those two chairs, that sitting space, exactly. and I bet you use it. Oh, and then look like the little sitting area exactly. there with the table. It's a living room. It's an extension of the Absolutely. living room, you know, outside. And we are out here all, all the time, time, all summer. So when, when coming up with the design for the pool house, one of the design duos who I'm mad for are the Bannermans, who did Prince Charles Highgrove outside of London. And one of the follies that they built on the property is this little oak and stucco building, very neoclassical, sort of temple-like. And that was the inspiration for the pool house. Cut to the chase, no stucco, and did it in hemlock and very open. But really it was kind of a, a play or kind of a riff off the house being this mock Greek revival, doing this little sort of temple as a pool house.